go. So today I'm just going to do a small piece on uh, how I would assess and check what a person's mobility and flexibility is like when they first come in. So this kind of dictates what I'll do with the client because if they're unbelievably tight in certain areas, my uh, first protocol is just to make sure that I get them a lot more mobile so they can do compound movements without getting the wrong firing. So let's say if they're deadlifting, that their glutes and hamstrings and posterior chain are doing a lot of the work first before the lower back and then the uh, quads come into it. So what we have here is my uh, beautiful assistant, Neil. So uh, I'm gonna just check his, his uh, flexibility. I'm really only gonna do this on one side. I should ideally obviously check for both because um, being tight on one side, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not such a great idea. But what we really are looking for is to sit, check if there's a massive difference between one side and the other side. So which you'll get, let's say when I'm dealing with like my pro golfers and tennis players and people like that. So if we just do a straight leg raise, so if you just try and bring that leg up towards you as much as you can. He's not quite at 90 degrees, which is, if I bring him a little bit more, I give him a bit of assistance there. So ideally what we're looking for is a 90 degree angle um, in that position. So if you're really struggling, obviously the hamstrings are, are an issue there. And some of it's gonna be your, your hip flexors as well. Again, I'm looking for a 90 degree angle at the side, so we're not far off that. Um, but it obviously still needs a little bit more work. So going into the lower back now on this side, so we're just gonna take uh, the knee across the body, trying to keep that shoulder on the floor. Again, we're looking to try and get that knee on the floor. So again, we've got a little bit of tightness in that low back. Normally when I see that tightness in the low back, then the glutes or piriformis tends to get a little bit tight as well. So if I take the foot, I'm just gonna bring it across, I'm gonna lock it in, use my other foot on the floor, and start to move that foot up towards his, his shoulder, his opposing shoulder. Ideally, what I'm looking for is that 90 degree angle. So again, we're tight in that area, so the glutes are tight, and I wouldn't be surprised that Neil, I know, gets some issues with the low back. You know, so um, especially if he's sitting on an airplane for a long period of time in the cinema, he can kind of get some pain with the lower back. Um, so again, what we're trying to do there is just loosen up the glutes an awful lot more, get a lot more glute activation work done, so he's got less problems with the IT band, which is going to load and take all those. Uh, all, 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 all the uh, pressure when he's doing certain movements if these guys aren't firing first. So what we're trying to do is get him a lot more mobile so that way when he does move, he can move a little bit more freely so he's not leaving a lot of strength on the table, so he's not missing out on a lot of strength that he could be developing because his, the, the, the sequential firing or how his muscles are working is not ideal. So what we'll do is, um, I'll actually just do one more thing, if you go into a dog down position, so if you fit over onto your front, and then uh, just pop up onto your toes. That's it, it's a nice dog up, not bad. You know, a good lower back mobility. And then go into the dog down position. So flip up, walk forwards just a tiny bit. We're looking for is just a nice, nice uh, equal triangle. So if you just put one foot in behind the other foot, try and pin the heel to the floor. You can see the heel's a good bit off the floor there. And again, some people, if they're very tight, the heel is starting to drift inwards. We're looking for that heel to stay um, slightly outwards. And what we're looking for, even if I took the shoes off, you'd see there's a bigger gap there on the floor. We're looking for that heel to pin down on the floor while still keeping that triangle position and driving the head through the arms. So it's a good stretch as well, but also lets me see what his ankle mobility is like and what his dorsiflexion is like in his ankle. So what we'll do is we're just going to swap over with um, with uh, another one of my clients, Aiden, and Neil will swap over with him. So that way you can see what we're ideally looking for. So we'll quickly switch, a bit of jump around the camera, and that's cool. So okay, if you like that again. So again, we're just gonna quickly run through all, all, all those little stretches again. I'm gonna straighten this one, bend. Knee straight away, goes nice up against the chest, and uh, no problem. So again, the uh, hip flexors are okay. We bring that up, so you've got nice and easy 90 degree flexibility, and that's how it should look. And we've got well over 90 on the sides there again. If I bend the knee, bring it across, that's it. And um, you in back problems at all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does now. <laughs> so again, the shoulders stay down the floor there, so um, it's not so bad if he can get his knee down on the floor relatively easy. If I again bring and turn the foot up, so if I start to bring it up a little bit, I have a little bit of play there. There's, it's still a bit tight there. I'd like to see that a little bit more free, you know, as he moves that in. So he, I know as I stretch him there, he's going to feel that over there in the glutes and the piriforms. I'd like to see that in a little bit more and get that perfect 90 degree angle, but that's pretty damn good. You know, so when he squats, when he deadlifts, everything should fire correctly as long as his core is staying nice and tight as well and he's keeping that strong lumbar curve. So just one more, if you go into that dog down position again, and if you just quickly stick your shoes off so that way you can see what it should be, and just walk your toes onto the mat, what it should look like in that dog down position. I just like a couple of yoga moves for these 
for this particular thing, and um, I'm kind of obsessing, just walk your feet onto the mat and your hands forward, just so they don't sit. Walk your hands further forward, further forward, further forward, so we have that nice and even triangle. And you see the way he doesn't even need to put one foot in behind the other foot. He's got good ankle and uh, uh, calf mobility there. So for me, that's going to be nice so when he squats or when he does any of those movements. Um, he's going to be able to get into that nice position because he's got the mobility there. If those are really tight, needs more foam rolling there. Maybe some work with a ball on the plantar flexes on the base of the foot. And um, maybe working on that tibialis around the front there as well. And you can foam roll there. Or if you could kneel down on the mat there. And then just sit back on your ankles, point your toes right back. And you'll feel that on the shins there as well if you're really tight. As you get better, you can lie back onto your back a little bit more. And then um, you can kind of work down into it. You know, but for the moment, like, you, know, you don't have to be able to do that. But you're still going to feel a long stretch on the front a little bit in the thighs. But the more mobile you are, you know, you'll get into better positions on the big compound. It's an awful lot easier and you're not going to leave a whole lot of strength on the table. So that's kind of a lot of the stuff I would go through with clients initially. And uh, keep them nice and fit and healthy like this young man. Thanks very much. Simple. Is it off now? Cheers. Yeah. It's, um...